you know that one half of all marriages in the United States end in divorce now? Why? Why has this become an epidemic? What can we do about it? Where can we go to find help? My name is Brandon Gear, and I've been married for 13 years. And me and my wife have established that the closer that we get to God, the closer we get to each other. Today I'm going to be speaking to you on a topic that is very much vital to the family structure. And not only the family structure, but society as a whole. The topic that I'm going to be speaking on is marriage. I will also be speaking on how we can address some of the issues that face marriage and hopefully present a solution to our problem. Today I'm going to be speaking on how crucial marriage is in society and why it should never be attacked, used, or denigrated by political pundits, religious leaders, or social groups who want to push their agenda on the silent masses. Today I will establish for you what marriage is and why it has worked for so many decades and what, what has pressured it in the last few years. So what is the main problem with marriage today? What can we do to save marriage? Now these are some of the questions that I ask myself on a regular basis. The day that we live in has developed this, this shallow worldview when it comes to marriage. This superficial view consists of an extension of dating into the legal bond that can be terminated as if it was disposable. We live in a society that seems bent on tearing down the moral institutions that have long shaped civilization into this modern world that we currently live in. This is the reason why there is a constant attack on the institution of marriage. And marriages are plagued with such things as infidelity, financial problems, family problems, and so many other things that have been a load on the marriage structure. Now, when it comes to marriage, there is so many things that we used to consider out of bounds, but, but they're not anymore, like open marriages, like pornography, and, and, and even gay marriage. Now these things, they attack marriage at the core, and it seems that even churches these days are embracing these wicked activities. So what is the problem? So the problem with marriage these days can be seen through statistics. Now the CDC states, the CDC states that by age 30, three-quarters of women in the U.S. have been married, and about half have cohabited outside of marriage. The, CD, CD, the CDC reports that unmarried cohabitations overall are less stable than marriages, and the probability of first marriages ending in separation or divorce within five years is 20%. But the probability of premarital cohabitations breaking up within five years is 49%. After 10 years, the probability of the first marriage ending is 33% compared with 62% for cohabitations. Now these statistics, they get worse and worse with second and third marriages. The problem is that we, as a culture, have embraced, like a, we, we've embraced a culture that allows people to live as if they were married even when they are not. And this has led to, to a careless look at what marriage is. People do not seem to be educated on what marriage is and why it is important to the family structure as a whole. So, what can we do to preserve marriage? Now, one thing that we can do is put the other person first. Society has become so self-obsessed and seemingly forget the, uh, the other person in this, in this legal god commission bond of marriage. Marriage was first established by God. And the Word of God says in Genesis that God states, it is not good for man to be alone, so I'll make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made woman from the rib and he, that he had taken out of man, and he brought her to man for the purpose of marriage. We must first realize that marriage was set up by God as a joint venture through the long haul. We should treat our mate as if they were infinite and that we're going to be together forever. Not as if we're just hanging out for a portion of our lives and when it's done, when we're done hanging out, we can dispose of them and go in our own way. That is not the way that marriage works. We should be aware that strong biblical leadership within the home helps immensely when it comes to order in the home, especially in our marriages. People should strive to become spiritually intimate as well as physically intimate. 
within the marriage. Now, we as a church have been called to be there for each other, and we should build up the institution of marriage through spiritual, emotional, and even physical intercession, if that be the case. Now, according to Focus on the Family's God's Design for Marriage portion of their website, with help, you can tap into the design that God has for marriage. God can show you how marriage is created out of a divine order. It is based on covenant relationship. It reflects our relationship with God and, is, and truly has a greater impact in our lives than so many other people assume. We should be there for each other as Christ followers. I don't know how many times I have seen physically with these eyes people within the church turn their backs on young couples in the church because they are having problems in their marriages, even to the point of divorce. But the church just sits idly by and marriages fall apart. The statistics do not lie. Within the church, within the church, the numbers are just as bad as it is in just in the world. It's horrible. Now in summary, we have a serious problem with marriage in this day and time. And we, and if we don't get a firm grip on it, we are destined to lose marriage altogether. We must, as followers of Christ, step up and take hold of this problem for Christ. And we must be Christ in our marriages. It is vital that we as a church step up in defense of marriage. Get a firm grip on our own marriage educate married couples on how important marriage is to God and the family structure. We should always remember that God was the one who created this structure. And who are we that we should think that we could, we could or should change what marriage is? Any questions?